Ladies and gentlemen, in this Global Toastmasters series, we are interviewing Toastmasters across the globe. They come from different parts of the world, and some of them don't just stick to their own country. They go to other countries and share their depth of knowledge, their wealth of knowledge, and their experience. And today we have someone from Malaysia. He's one of the youngest Toastmasters that I know of, and he is distinguished Toastmaster Ravindran Subramaniam. How are you? I am wonderful, as you should <laughs> all about the world. <laughs> okay, we are going to ask a bit about your background. Where, where are you living now? And uh, what profession did you do? Well, perhaps you can start with your background. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, to begin with, my full name is uh, Ravindran Subramaniam. But I may be addressed simply as Ravi. It serves me fine, as they say. A rose by any name is still a rose. So Ravi is still Ravindran Subramani. No issues there. I'm the eldest in a family of eight. I don't have parents anymore. I lost a younger sibling about two decades ago. So net seven and my siblings are all over the world. Uh, Belfast, Hobart and whatever. Uh, I am presently residing in Kuala Lumpur, uh, though I spent a good portion of my work life in the Borneo states of Sabah, Sarawak, and of course, uh, Brunei, Darussalam, and Labuan. So <laughs> Borneo is much more my home, to be honest, uh, because uh, of so much of uh, intimate uh, relationship with so many activities in Borneo. But then since I'm born here in Kuala Lumpur, I reside here in Kuala Lumpur at the moment. Uh, professionally, uh, of course, uh, given uh, my age, you mentioned that I'm youngest. No, I understand what you're trying to say, but no, I'm by no means young in that sense. But yeah, young in thinking, young in uh, energy. Uh, professionally, I like to look upon myself as an instructor, an instructor for both hard skills as well as soft skills. The hard skills uh, in which I'm involved is, I'm a flight instructor for light sport aircraft. Uh, yes, I do hold a private pilot's license and with the instructor rating. I do fly, I teach people to fly, both ground and air. And besides uh, flying manned aircraft, I also teach on drones or unmanned aircraft. These are the hard skills, um, both from the aviation world, a lot of technical things involved. I enjoy doing that. Uh, by and large, uh, people, in, including participants, students, tell me that I'm good at demystifying and simplifying hard technical subjects into a simple layman's term. Uh, so I enjoy doing that. Uh, then on the other side, I'm also involved in soft skills, uh, which are things like persuasive marketing, leadership, conflict resolution, communication skills, and the whole gamut. Um, I enjoy that too, because as Simon Sinek would say, the soft skills today are fast becoming the hard skills of tomorrow. And uh, I think um, when an employer looks for an employee, hard skills is a given. There's nothing to check on that. It's a soft skill that they invariably look for. So true, that's true. the way I think I would like to place myself. Uh, so that should give you some idea of where I'm heading for. Who or what made you join Toastmasters? I'm sure everyone who's listening now would want to know that. Wow, this is a million dollar question because it happened so many decades ago. Uh, but if I can put my memory back and put things together. This was way back in 1988. I was in Miri, Sarawak. Miri is an oil town, a rich oil town in Sarawak. I was doing some work there at that point of time and I chanced upon uh, a newspaper article. I don't know whether it's a Sarawak Tribune or the Daily Express. But there was a nice, interesting article a gentleman by the name of Gerald Green was due to be in Kuching on a particular Sunday to give a talk on the concept of Toastmasters. And I was excited. Uh, I, I knew even then that communications is an important tool, an important aspect 
in anything you do at whatever level you are, you must be able to persuade people, get your idea across, or argue your way out convincingly. So I knew this is something that I want to be there at whatever price. So that weekend, I took a flight. Miri, by the way, is north of Kuching by an hour and a half by flight. And I took a flight back. I attended the meeting and the rest was history. <laughs> and, and to put it simply, I learned Toastmasters from the horse's mouth, so to say. Papa Gerald Green, as he's affectionately known, is reputed to have brought Toastmasters from the US to our shores, to the shores of Malaysia. Um, and I met him again about one year later on another event. We did have have some close uh, collaboration. Whatever I practice in, in so far as Toastmasters is what they, they call in KFC, the Kentucky Fried Chicken, as the original recipe. <laughs> <laughs> nice to hear. <laughs> yeah, in those days it was interesting because if you notice, uh, we did not have the pathways as we have now. Correct, correct. Yes, uh, we had the first 10 speeches which led to the basic uh, skills, which is known as the competent Toastmaster or CTM in short. Then we had the advanced Toastmaster bronze and another 10 speeches. To do that, you move up to the advanced Toastmaster silver. Then finally, cap it up with the advanced Toastmaster goal. That's on the uh, communication side. Now, on the leadership track, you have to cap it up with what they call is uh, high performance leadership. Uh, yes. So I did that. And uh, in 2001, I earned a coveted DTM status, which is the highest in Toastmasters. Uh, right now, I'm doing toast, the DTM uh, path, through the pathways, second time around. So Nice uh, to hear that. And one more interesting facet I need to show about this is... Um, in those days, uh, we were not part of a district as we are familiar with District 51, District 102, and things like that, uh, because they did not have sufficient clubs to form a district. I don't know how many it takes, I can't remember that, but uh, we were known as a territorial council. Uh, nice. and the formation of a bona fide district, a territorial council. So you can take it that I come from the dinosaur age, you know, where we didn't even have a district. But the Toastmasters is still the same. It's about communication, it's the leadership, it's the camaraderie, it's the network, it's the friendship. It's about fun and learning while having immense joy. No change to that. So given your uh, wealth of experience from those dinosaurs age, <laughs> Are there any wonderful moments that you can share with us? Soon after me attending that talk in Kuching by Gerald Green, uh, we formed the first ever Toastmasters Club in Kuching. Wow. Uh, the Great. Kuching Toastmasters Club, and I was one of the charter members. That was in February 1988. I was a charter member of the Kuching Toastmasters Club. We used to meet at the Holiday Inn in Kuching, I remember very well, uh, because I was based in Kuching at that time. Lo and behold, every time there's a meeting, I was never in town because my job uh, entailed uh, frequent traveling. Uh, so most of the time I'm away. Uh, when meeting comes, I'm not around. So I miss meetings. And if at all uh, I happen to be in town, I'm not ready to do a speech. Yes. So at the most I did when I was around is attend uh, table topics. But imagine as a rookie, you have butterflies going through your stomach. <laughs> but nonetheless, I did participate. Sometimes get pushed in, of course. Uh, they volunteered me. So I'm glad they did anyway, because that makes what I am today. Um, and so it happened just about uh, slightly more than a year and a half later, towards the end of 1989, I was transferred to Kota Kinabalu, Sabah. And my immediate uh, thing that I did is to check whether there's a Toastmasters club anywhere <laughs> in Kinabalu or Sabah. You know, that, that's what my immediate concern, because I knew the benefits of Toastmasters. And I found that there was no Toastmasters club. So I came with the solid thought in my mind that one of the first things I'm going to do besides finding a house to stay, of course, is to form a Toastmasters club in Sabah. 
thought I was lucky enough, thank God, I met a couple of lovely people who together we joined and we made a public presentation, the first ever public presentation. I remember the place, Palace Hotel in Kota Kinabalu, Karamun Singh to the Pacific, where 44 people turned up for the public presentation. And out of the 44, guess how many signed up? A whopping 40 people signed up at that very evening itself to join Toastmasters. Oh, amazing, amazing. So whether it's due to good salesmanship or good product and service, you take it from there. But I believe it's the goodness of Toastmasters because what I did is I showed them the TI's monthly magazine. Those of you who are old enough to remember, those days it was a hard copy. And I told yeah, them, yes. even this magazine you receive monthly is worth much more than the fees that you paid. And they bought into it. And I remember there was one question one lady asked me in the audience. And she's still around, by the way. I just met her at the 31st installation night of the Kota Kinabalu Toastmasters Club just about a month ago. I normally go there whenever there's an installation night just to give my, lend my support to the incoming expo. She asked me the question, uh, sir, how many speeches have you done in Toastmasters? And I was like, short, stunned there because, you know, in Kuching Toastmasters, I was traveling all the while. I hardly did any speeches. So I gathered my breath. I said, hold on. I'll thank you for the good question. Fantastic. I'll come back to you at the end of this talk. And of course, you're buying time. You know, in training, this is buying time to find an answer. So end of the talk, I came back to a question, Madam, now to address your question. How many speeches do you think I've done? I asked her. And she said, well, looking at the way you presented this evening, I'm sure you have done all the 10 basic speeches and more. And I said, the truth of the matter is, I've not even done one. So the message here is, even if you did not do the speeches, you just attend, listen to other accomplished speakers, participate a little bit at table topics, you are bound to pick up something. And this is where I am. What more if you follow the path regimentedly? So that explains why 40 people signed up that day. <laughs> she signed up, and she's still a member of the club until today, 32 years later. Perhaps you can share one of your challenges and how you overcame them. All right. This is a very interesting one. We're good for the audience to know because some you. of them may have something similar also. Thank you. Uh, this is regarding change management. How do you handle change management? Uh, with my experience with hindsight, I can share that to set up a new club, is easy peasy Japanese. It's not that difficult. Of course, there's some work involved, no doubt about it. But the challenges are minuscule in comparison with turning around a dying club. So I took upon myself the challenge of, the, of turning around a dying club when I was three position in Kuala Lumpur. Um, I looked at the club, uh, why it was failing. At the time I came in, there had less than eight active members. Miserable number. You, you cannot run a decent meeting with that kind of number because out of it, only four will turn up. So that's just the, the way it goes. So I looked at it uh, and then I found out I have to strategize what I could do. Um, well, uh, let me begin by first saying why it's difficult to rebuild a dying clock. You're dealing with imbued politics. People are already stuck in their way of doing things. They will not be able to buy in uh, to what you're saying. And trust me, they are not wrong. You can never say they are wrong because in their mindset, in their way of thinking, they are right. We must emphasize this. We must begin from there. They are not wrong. They are right from the way they think. So one of the things is I did is I brought in uh, what is now obviously the stalwart in Toastmasters, Stephen Fernando, uh, one of them who came in. Even those days, he was already wait, worth his weight in gold. And another very strong gentleman, Dominic Gerard Joseph. He's uh, my wingman even until today. So 30, 40 years later, he's still my wingman. He brought in Stephen Fernando in, in fact, to be honest. 
And um, when people saw these strong people, they are able to see where the vision is going to be because these people are already there. So they can <laughs> say, hey, if I follow, I'll be there. And true enough, uh, everyone was excited. And one more thing we did is we ran weekend public speaking skills courses for the public, for members of the public. It was not priced too high. It was just 99 ringgit for three Sundays, which works to 33 ringgit per Sunday. And it used to be full house. We ran about two or three of these workshops. Uh, each time, maximum 20, full house, full house, full house. We, we got it published in the newspapers, full house. What happened eventually is, after the workshop, almost all participants who attended will join the Toastmasters Club. So you nice. find suddenly there's an infusion of new blood into the club. So that sort of helped turn around the, the club. The other thing I did is, of course, give equal opportunity for every established member to participate in the workshop. Maybe the session before morning break, one person handles. After morning break till lunch, another person handles. After lunch till tea break, another person handles and so on and so forth. So everyone gets a sense of involvement, a pride. And I also give them the privilege to bring whatever certificates, medals, banners they have. Because those masters, we have plenty of this. Put it up on the table and show to them that what you have achieved. So the pride comes in there, the ownership. Uh, you have to recognize these things, you know. So that helped to make the club uh, immensely successful there. So. These are the, some of the challenges and how I have faced them. And once again, I must always thank those who have brought me up. Uh, it, it's never a one-man show. People who stood by you through thick and thin. To Steven Fernando, Dominic Gerard Joseph, and a whole host of other people, uh, too many to mention, uh, runs A to Z. I also understand that, apart from being a member of Toastmasters, you have started something different you have promoted and and encouraged the art of debate by having a team of Toastmasters who are interested in debates could you elaborate a uh, this is my initiative uh, which i founded sometime early this year it's titled the global round Borneo debate series we have already run two of these debates successfully between two competing Toastmasters clubs, friendly debates. It's not a competition, but friendly debates on very interesting topics. We are due to run the third of the series on 26, Monday, 26th of September, between a club here in Kuala Lumpur and another in Jakarta. Um, the reason why I, I thought of this is, having been in Toastmasters, I thought of giving real world communication skills to those who have gone through the basic training in Toastmasters. Because, you know, in the corporate jungle, bosses don't have the time to hear your five to six minutes or seven minute speeches. They just give you one minute, two minutes. You'll be able to put your point across, argue, debate, convince them, whatever, then you lost your flow. This is exactly what happens in debates. So sharpen the skills, real world communication through debates. And I think uh, this will work well as far as application of community skills is concerned. And by the way, debating is part of Toastmasters activities. Uh, there are quite a number of debating Toastmasters clubs across the world. Just two weeks ago, I saw somewhere in Africa, and the continent of Africa, a Toastmasters debating club. Um, here, because I want to keep costs as minimal as possible. Uh, in fact, right now, there's no fees whatsoever for participation. So we run it as an, as an informal group, it's been successful so far. At a later stage, of course, it may be formalized, uh, then it may incur some fees and whatever, but for right now, we'll keep it lean, mean, and simple. Uh, it's serving us very well. Uh, in fact, response is so good. Not only the third of the series is up in September, even the fourth and the last for the year in November, we already have the two competing teams already. One from West Malaysia, and also one from um, Indonesia. And eventually we are looking at debating from organizations, entities outside of Toastmasters, schools, 
universities, colleges, there are tons of them. So how do our Toastmasters stand against them? Let's see how it goes. In the not too distant future, I'm looking even at competing with, say, the Oxford debating team. I, I, we are just looking at that. It is possible. So let's see where it goes. Uh, we are excited. Again, I'm fortunate to have a wonderful team backing me up on this. Of course, they are not around at every debate. And, and I fully understand because the world being so dynamic, so fast moving, there's so many activities going on. Temporarily, they go out to do something else. They come back. That's fine. That's fine. So the group is still there. We are still organizing the debates. And we are very excited about this because uh, it's an opportunity for people to develop further. Nice to hear that. I'm sure apart from that, you may have something else in your mind that you want to do. Would you like to share with us? Sure. Uh, one of the things that I mean, uh, it's on my mind already, uh, and I think it's going to crystallize very soon, is to bring train the trainer uh, programs for Toastmasters. Uh, I, I can see as I go around, uh, there are many people who have already picked up the rudiments of speaking and so forth, but uh, we could polish them up into good trainers. We must recognize the fact that each and every one of us has some skill, has some message with which they can share to the rest of the world. So train them up to be trainers and let them get the message across as effectively as possible. Uh, why I'm saying this, why I feel there's a need for this is as I go around, uh, let's say if I come across a presentation where they use PowerPoint slides, I still come across very wordy PowerPoint slides. The whole slide, nothing but words. We you didn't know in presentations, you just bullet points and you expand on the bullet points. That's the fundamentals of training. Because if you put too wordy a slide, the people are not going to watch you. They're going to read the slide. So you lost your audience. How do you engage them? So these are the final points we got to share with them. I've already talked to one club. I think it's going to happen uh, maybe even before the year is out. Thereafter, we'll take it across. Uh, at this point of time, we are not talking about fees uh, because uh, that's not the crux of the matter. Um, this is where I fully subscribe to what the International Director of Toastmasters for year 2000, distinguished Toastmaster, Joanna McWilliams, her team was friends helping friends succeed. So I buy in very much into this. We go on the premise of friends helping friends succeed. We will get our returns in so many other ways. It's always a joy to share with other people and in return getting back from them. Uh, trust me, when I teach, when I instruct, I also learn. I learn so much from my students, <laughs> my students, my participants. So that's the way I'm gravitating to now. Besides the debates, train the trainer. Singish Toastmaster Ravindran Subramaniam, you have shared a lot of information with us. I'm sure the viewers would like to know which are the clubs where you are active and perhaps they might even want to visit your clubs. So could you share that with us? Uh, yes. Um, in honor of uh, me setting up and bringing Toastmasters Sabah, my home club, the Kota Kinabalu Toastmasters Club, has given me lifelong honorary membership. In our club constitution, there is such a provision. They can appoint honorary members. So they've appointed me as an honorary lifelong member, which means until I go to the next world, I don't have to pay any fees. I'm still a member, which I'm very thankful to them for the recognition. And uh, as I mentioned, I also go whenever possible for the installation night just to recognize the incoming uh, expo and give support. The other than uh, Kota Kinabalu Toastmasters Club, I'm also a member of the Mid Valley Toastmasters Club. I'm quite active here. I chose that club because it's very near to where I stay. Of course, they've given me leadership positions and all, but uh, I thought that I, I best I play a role of a hot seat or an advisor. Um, hot seat in the sense that at any time you want somebody, even at the 11th hour, just slot me in and I can take up the role. Uh, so, and true enough, uh, last Monday when we had our meeting at Mid Valley, we had an external speaker, an external speaker on motivation. He came and gave a talk on motivation and they asked me to be the evaluator. 
Now, how do you evaluate somebody as a non-toastmaster? You cannot use a toastmaster script. So they cook up something and yet give him what he rightfully deserves for his time. So I played these kind of roles and I'm quite happy with that. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. And of course, over and above this, I get invited to quite a number of clubs, both in Indonesia and also here in Malaysia to come in as evaluators. Just like last night, I was a general evaluator at one Toastmasters club known as PPTD. Toastmasters Club of Putrajaya. All the senior government servants are there. I was a general evaluator. And two days before that, I was a general evaluator at Maxis Toastmasters Club. So I quite enjoy all these things because, as I said, we learn by sharing. Okay, your final message to anyone who's just joined Toastmasters or any viewer is watching it and considering to becoming a Toastmaster. What I can share is Hang in there. Don't give up. Challenges there will be. Rise above the challenges. A raw stone, in order to be converted into a diamond, goes through a series of polishing, grinding, polishing, grinding, polishing. Of course, there's going to be heat in the process. Attrition, that's normal. But through that process, you become molded into a beautiful diamond. Hang in there, participate actively, and you find in no time, you're even better than many others, so much so the next time around, Sir Brahma will be interviewing you <laughs> like this. Thank you, sir. Thank you, DTM Ravi. Uh, we learned a lot from you. And as I said, you are actually the one of the youngest Toastmasters because you have so many ideas in your mind. And... It's really nice to hear all this. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is our wonderful DTM Ravindran Subramaniam from Malaysia. And with that, we end today's session. We'll be back again with another interesting personality. Thank you, sir.